All right. So let me take off my screen share in here just a minute. So everybody, my name is Sean McMean. I'm the founder of Vinnie Mac Restoration Marketing. And today's webinar, again, is going to be about water damage SEO. It's our framework that we use to help companies generate more phone calls for their damage restoration business. And the webinar is going to last about 30 minutes or so. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and dive into it. And if you have any questions along the way, feel free to leave them in the chat or um, you can always um, you can hang out afterwards as well. So let's go ahead and get started. Um, let me share my screen here. Again, today's webinar is about SEO for your water damage business. And uh, we're going to do a quick introduction. Uh, with that. And then we're also going to, we're going to talk about common issues, uh, the process that we use to help damage restoration companies rank uh, all over the United States, and really what's working today in 2024. Um, things have changed dramatically over the last few years. And then we're going to set an action plan as well on this webinar, because last thing we want to do is go through learning and not uh, set an action plan uh, to follow through with that learning that we took in place. So um, let's go ahead a little bit about me. Again, this webinar is not here to sell you on our services or anything like that, but really to help you get some actionable information that's going to help you connect with damage restoration uh, homeowners that need to, your services across the country, right? And so um, a little bit about my story. I got into this industry because I was a homeowner that was impacted by a flood in my home. I had an outside spigot that froze and flooded my basement. And so that's where my passion comes from because I needed that help and I didn't know where to turn to. So I called my insurance company and so on and so forth. And luckily I had the opportunity to work in with an amazing company and uh, turned out great for me. Um, and so we've worked, um, I was about a year later, I was able to work with a damage restoration company in, in St. Louis on a marketing perspective. And then we shifted about six uh, years ago into the damage restoration space. And so that's, that's enough about me, but um, ultimately, uh, we've worked with over 50 companies and continue to work with over 50 companies across the country right now. And so we have expertise from East Coast to West Coast. Um, we do have a podcast. So after this, we do. You, there's lots of tips that you can find on that podcast. Um, and you can also get a copy of a book that I wrote about um, how to get more uh, phone calls with damage restoration uh, for damage restoration using Internet marketing. Right. And so that is available on Amazon. But if you stay to the end of this webinar, we're going to make sure you get a copy of that and also some resources that are going to be very helpful for you if you wanted to uh, try to tackle the SEO or just check in, making sure that whoever you have doing it now is doing what, what uh, they, they need to be doing, right, to, in order to increase your visibility. So if I could get your attention just for the next 30 minutes, please turn off your cell phones, turn off your Facebook. Um, and I promise you, if you give me 30 minutes, it'll be well worth your time. And you're going to get some actionable items out of this. So um, my goal in 2024 is really to help double the sales of 50 damage restoration contractors by using internet marketing. And it's it's truly my passion, right? And so um, I have... Um, I, I've had the opportunity to work with a lot of companies, but our goal this year is to work with 50, it, whether it's direct or indirect, whether you get some information from this that's going to help grow your business, that's my goal, right? And so um, one of the things that we see in this industry, some common issues, right? There's tons of competition in your local area. There's a high cost of getting that phone to ring and the results are up and down, right? And so some months you're just crushing it, some months you're struggling to, to get uh, results. And so, um, you know, it's it's one of these things that you need to have a proven process, just as, as if you go into uh, a home to do a restoration, you have a process that you and your team follows, right? You need to have a process for your online marketing as well. And so we're going to talk a little bit more about that. But the harsh reality is that uh, 10% of restoration companies are getting about 90% of the jobs out there. And because they have a strategy, not just an online strategy, but also a, a referral marketing strategy and a relationship building strategy, right? And so what I see when talking to, uh, I, I talk to probably 30 to 40 restoration companies uh, a month, right? And just whether it's webinars or podcasts or um, them asking about our services, and about 90% of them don't have an active strategy. With that, they who do have a strategy, they struggle with it, right? And so that's where my passion comes from, is to help that 90%. And so 
we this kind of graph kind of represents um, what what we're seeing here. Um, and so when what we see is common issues. So most of the companies that provide an amazing service, they just don't have the visibility in their local market, right? And so again, this webinar is about SEO, but I want to kind of give you some guidance of what we're seeing in the industry. Um, and so there's there's ways to get paper lead um, opportunities, right? There's companies out there that sell you leads, but when those dry up or the relationship ends, then you fall back in here and nobody knows who you are. Um, there's also ways to get referrals, right? You can create relationships with plumbers and insurance companies and property managers and things like that. And um, it, it it works, but it also, there's no, there's highs and lows right there, right? So ultimately what we try to do with our clients and, and what I would recommend for you is to have a comprehensive approach to become the best known company in your area so that you have a brandable asset, a brandable company that people recognize and they trust in your local area, right? And so in order to do that, you need to have a comprehensive strategy. This is the strategy that we use to help elevate the brand and dominate um, uh, help our companies dominate their competition, right? And it's, so there's multi-pronged approach. And I'm just covering the internet marketing side here, but you also want to be doing referral partners and 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 whether you're doing TPA work and all that stuff alike. Um, today, what we're going to focus on is the SEO side of things, okay? And so with the SEO side of things, um, you know, it, there's a lot to unpack with it, but there's a framework that you can follow to have some success online, right? And um, and ultimately, what, let me just make sure we've got the chat up here. Um, okay, so ultimately what you want to make sure, it, you, I always get asked this question, does SEO still matter? Does it matter in 2024? And you can guess the question or the answer to that is, is absolutely yes, it matters. Um, because when you go out and do a search, let's say you're searching, you're in Chicago and you're searching for water damage restoration services as a homeowner, most of the time you're gonna pull up this guy right here, you're going to pull up your cell phone, right? And you're going to do a search. And typically what you're going to see is at the top of the page, you're seeing Google guaranteed. You're going to see paid ads. You're going to see Google maps. And then below that, you're going to see organic. Where does SEO come into play? SEO comes into play with Google maps and the organic results, right? So ultimately you, you, it's about having those multiple fishing poles in the water. And you can see here, if you have a comprehensive approach, you're going to have four fishing poles in the water when somebody's searching for that specific term or needing that help, right? And so today, what we're going to focus on, on is the Google Maps section or Google Business Profile and the organic side, right? And so a little bit to answer that question, yes, it doesn't matter, right? And you can't just rely on on paid ads or a paper lead approach. You need to have a comprehensive approach, right? And so here's a little bit of stats. I won't go into bore you with a bunch of numbers here, but ultimately uh, these numbers are coming from very uh, reputable reputable uh, research firms online. And about 68% of on online experiences begin with a search engine. How many times do we go out to Google to find solutions to problems? And ultimately, that's what Google's looking for. They're looking for um, the reason why they're in business is because searchers come to them to, to, to solve, pro uh, to, to search for uh, solutions to problems, right? And Google has to recommend companies to solve that problem for them, right? And so there's a number of factors that go into play um, for you, Google to recommend your company. Clearly, you can pay ads, you can pay for ads in order to, to recommend your company, but they also, there's a, other factors related to SEO that's going to help them recommend your company. And so, not to bore you with all the technical details here with everything, but ultimately, there's a bunch of ranking factors. And if so, um, I, I I geek out on this stuff, but but um, as business owners and 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 managers of restoration companies, um, you really don't care about all this stuff. You just want to help homeowners that need your services, right? And you want to grow your business and provide for your family and for your teams. And so, uh, you know, there's a lot that goes into an SEO ranking signals. And there's just a number of, of things here that that come into play with that. But ultimately, they fall into four main categories. And again, I won't go into the technical nuances because those don't really matter as much nowadays. Um, but there are certain aspects you need to pay attention to more um, than, than others. And so they're broken into four kind of buckets here. You have the technical SEO, and that's what the, the SEOs geek out on and my team geeks out on and stuff like that. Um, you know, and, and your hosting and all of those types of things that 
most people could care less about, but there are the foundational aspects of the technical things that matter. Then you have the on-page things, such as the content that you have on your page, the types of pages that you have, the images, the videos, those types of things, and the topical relevance of what you have on your website, right? And then you have the off-page. These are backlinks or social media follows and tweets and all of those sort of things, your reviews on Google Maps, press releases, and all of those sorts of things. Those are off-page elements. And then you have the experience. And so you could have all three of those things right and dialed in for your company, but the experience of, of actually visiting your website and actually getting the answers to the problem that, that that searcher was searching for is very important. You know how important it is to be mobile responsive in this industry, right? So as homeowners go to the cell phone and they search for solutions, um, your website has to look good and put and 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 work on a mobile side right and so the experience is very very important annoying pop-ups you don't want any of that sort of stuff and the speed of loading of that page is, is critically important okay so these are the four categories of ranking factors to simplify what we were talking about before all of these more complex things these are these are where it falls into okay and so what Google did is they come up with this analogy or this acronym that they use, and they call it EAT, E-E-A-T, right? And it has to do with your experience as a company, your expertise, your authoritativeness, and your trustworthiness. And if you can solve all of these signals in Google's eyes, there shouldn't be a reason why they, they don't recommend your company to the searcher looking for a solution, right? And so... Um, not to dive in too much of this, but this is really what Google is telling us they're looking for. And so in order to do that, um, you know, there's there's several ranking factors. This is the, the, the stats for 2023. What is the important things you need to focus in for SEO to make a difference? And you can see here your Google Maps um, profile is, is a very important factor, um, along with your on-page and content that you have on your website, the reviews that you have for your website, your links, your citations, and all of those sort of things, right? And so those are all important factors that, um, that come into play. There's a, a study coming out for 2024 um, towards, towards the middle of the year, and so there'll be different um, fluctuations there. But the big factor nowadays that's, that's increased more is your reviews. So you can get all of these technical things right, but... If you're a company that does not focus on getting reviews for your company, you are you're setting yourself up to um, be yelling from a bullhorn, but nobody's listening because um, you don't have the reviews to back that up, right? And so um, I just will stress that reviews are are, um, are becoming a very very big ranking factor. Um, you know, so the new SEO formula that I talked about here is, is really about a couple key elements here. And not to go too, um, too in depth here, but, but to give you a, a framework to follow. These are the most important points of this. You need to um, figure out what are the most important keywords based on your services that you provide, whether you're a mitigation company only or your full service restoration company, or you provide additional services. You need to um, you know, focus on the keywords that are that are important for your your service area, and and then you also want to make sure that um, you use some tools to, in order to gather that data, right? So you your your website is really the hub of that space. It it needs to have unique pages targeting those keywords. Um, it needs to have pages for every single service that you provide for your company. And you need to have pages for the, the uh, cities or towns around uh, your service area that you, you, you service, okay? So for an example, if you are located in Chicago, you should um, focus on your primary keywords related to water damage restoration Chicago or mold remediation Chicago, those sort of keywords. And I'm going to give you that list here in just a second here, so don't, don't, um, don't worry about that. Um, the... Then you also need to have a service page for every single service that you provide, whether it's water, mold, fire, um, reconstruction, if you're doing asbestos, crime scene, all those types of things, a service page for each one of them. Do not have just a service page and list all your services on there. Um, so that's an important key element that I see missing on a lot of websites. 
And then when I talk about uh, locations pages or a, a page for lo locations, that's about having um, those surrounding towns around Chicago. If you were located in Chicago, you want to have a page for Naperville, for um, you know all of the towns around the, around Chicago, right? And so on those pages, you want to talk about um, the services you provide in that area, right? Okay. So, so that's that's the second element there. The third element is about optimizing your website for user experience. Does your website load fast, and is it optimized for mobile traffic? The the fourth element here is about SEO optimization. I'm going to give you some pointers here about that in just a second on the on-page stuff that you need to focus on. Then the 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 fifth element here is about building authority or offsite um, optimization, and then tracking results. This is a key factor that I see missing for a lot of companies. They either try internet marketing themselves, or they hire a company to do internet marketing, and there's no tracking in place for you to understand whether it's working or not. Everybody has a business card for their business, right? And you have a phone number that's on that business card, right? So if you hand that business card out to plumbers and property managers and 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 whatnot, and you get phone calls to that number, you need to um, not treat those phone calls the same as you treat your online presence, right? So if you if somebody goes to your website, you need to have a unique number on that website to to, to understand how many calls you're actually getting from that website. Or if you're running Google ads, you need to have a unique number on that to understand if you're getting phone calls from that. And if you don't have that tracking in place, you're sort of flying blind. You can put all this in place and you just don't know where those leads are coming from. A lot of times people will ask, uh, well, how did you find us? And homeowners and businesses, they, they just don't know. I found you online, right? Well, that's, that's great. But was that a paid ad or was that an SEO? Or was that a Google Maps or whatnot? And so tracking in place is a critical component. I've done several podcasts about this and webinars about this. But um, after you do all of this stuff, if you don't have that tracking in place, um, you can't tell if it's working for you. Okay. So I'm going to give you these checklists at the end. These are comprehensive checklists that you can go one by one to make sure you're following this or that whoever on your team or a company that you're working with is following this. Um, and, and so ultimately, you're going to be able to, um, to follow this and gives you, gives you a baseline of what you need to make sure is in place, okay? So we'll give you that link at the end of this. Now, many of us are doing water damage restoration, right? And so what are the keywords? What are the industry terms that um, we want to show up for? Here's a sampling of those keywords. And then you wanna do some variations of the city that you're lo located in, right? And so these are, the, I'm gonna give you this uh, copy of these keywords. These are some of the most converting keywords that we see across the country. And it's different in varying areas, right? So if you're in Texas, you probably don't have basements or if you're in Florida, you don't have basements. So that doesn't apply, but, um, for the most part, these are the high level keywords that we go after. And then there's variations based on cities and locations and, and nuances related to those. So whether you're doing SEO or PPC, these are the keywords you wanna go after on the water damage side. So take a screenshot of that if you want, or you can download the list after the end of the webinar here. So if you're doing mold remediation, here's a list of those keywords that are important right that you want to focus on for your for your services on mold remediation and again some nuances here if you don't do testing or if your company has um if your company is um um, you know, in Florida and you can't do testing and remediation, right? You might not want to have a testing page, but maybe you do and you refer that work at, right? So if you are providing mold remediation services, you probably want to have a mold remediation page and you want to have a mold testing page, even though you're not providing that service if you're located in Florida or different, different areas have different rules, um, doesn't mean you don't want to have that call to build that relationship with with um, with that homeowner that needs needs help, right? So those are some mold remediation keywords. If you're doing fire, smoke, soot, uh, here's some keywords that you can associate to those services. Obviously, um, you have a lot of complexity with fire side. Um, there's so many uh, people that have relationships. In, in the fire fire side and and people listening to radios and doing all that sort of thing. So we really don't see a ton on the fire side. We see the aftermath, the smoke damage, the soot um, and 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 sort of things. but um, you know in, in SEO, it's still important to have that on your page and, and talk about those sort of um, um, you know services that you provide in there. 
So you are going to get this keyword list and I'm going to give you that link, promise you that, and it will list all of these keywords. Um, and you can also watch the recording of this to, to get any additional. So, excuse me. Um, so let's talk about your website. So this truly is your online presence, your hub, your hub of your online presence, right? And so um, you can see a couple examples of, of clients here that, that we have. Um, and so I'm just going to talk about a couple of the elements on the left here, left hand side here. You really want to make sure your website just as looks as good as if your truck um, is wrapped in and 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 whatnot, right? So if somebody hears about your company, they search for your company, you're going to want to make sure that it represents your company well, right? You, your logo and branding, and that it mo loads fast on mobile. You want to make sure that you have a good hosting provider and it's not super slow, right? If you pull it up on your phone, does it load slow? That's a red flag, right? Um, disconnect from Wi-Fi. Here's a tip. Disconnect from Wi-Fi and see if it loads on your phone fast, okay? So the other things you want to make sure you optimize it to generate phone calls. What I mean by that is if you look at that Apex uh, page on the top here, as you scroll down that page, that phone number is always present on the top. And then as you continue to scroll down the page, you're going to see that phone number. You're going to see different ways for people to communicate, whether it's chat, forms, um, those sort of things, right? The other thing you're going to see is there's a page for every service that you provide. And I talked about that earlier. And then there's a page for every location that you provide that service in, not just the main location where you're at, but all those surrounding areas, okay? You want to make sure you're doing helpful content on that website. You can hear, you've heard the term probably of blogging before. And um, really what that is about is when, again, people come to Google for, for solutions to problems, right? And so you can scream from the rooftop that we provide an amazing service in this specific area. But if you don't back it up with expertise, it goes back to that eat analogy that I told you about. You don't back it up with expertise on helpful tips or jobs that you've done or those sort of helpful content pieces. Google doesn't know to recommend your company because there's other companies that are doing that, right? And so you have the piece of you shouting, saying you provide a service in a specific area, you have your helpful content piece, and then you have your reviews, and it creates this triangle for, of trust for Google to understand that you're the perfect company to help this searcher with the problem, right? There's other elements on your page that I commonly see that are, are, are off. So the title of the page or what's called an H1 of the page. Many times... Um, what I see is when a website gets developed by a designer, the title of the page is, is the wrong words associated with it or the wrong words connected into it. And so think about the title of the page, just like if you were to go to a bookstore, I don't know if anybody goes to a bookstore nowadays anyway, um, but if you go to a bookstore and you pick a book off the shelf, right? And that book has a title on it, right? Many websites I see have a bunch of different titles because it's a, a bunch of technical um, things. So the one thing you want to look for and you want to ask about is how many H1 tags are on that page. And if the if you see multiple H1 tags on it, it's just like if you go buy a book and it had 20 uh, H1 tags, it had 20 titles on it. We don't know what this book is about. And the harder you make it for Google to understand what your book is about or what your website is about, the harder it is for them to recommend you because there's so many other companies that are doing this right, okay? So um, when you when you put that in correctly, uh, Google is going to very clearly recommend your company for uh, providing services to that searcher, right? So that's your website. Um, and and in the book, in our book, we'll, we'll talk a lot about how to structure those pages and things like that. And we did a previous webinar about how to design your website and how to do those things. So um, when you go to restorationmarketing.com, you'll be able to see that webinar and, and access those details. The next thing you want to make sure you're doing is monthly content. So this is about what I talked about before, your blogs, your case studies, press releases, and frequently asked questions. So you can see a listing of some of those types of topics you want to cover. And you might think, well, why do I want to give tips for um, you know, how to restore your home, right? Uh, I want them to call me. Well, you're showing your expertise to Google so that they can recommend people to, to go to you for that solution, right? And so that's really what the helpful content piece is about. And you can do it with blog posts and you can do it with what we call case studies. So let's say you've done a, a water damage restoration job and you've got amazing before and after pictures of that. You turn that into a case study that talks about here's the problem they had, 
here's the solution and here's the aftermath, right? And then you back it up by getting the review. Get that review from that homeowner as soon as they give you a compliment, not at the end of the job, but as soon as they give you a compliment, right? And so you need to be doing content like this on a monthly basis in order to share your expertise and, and continue. You can't just create it once and forget about it. Um, it's, it's extremely important to continue having a, a consistent approach with it, right? Um, the other thing you want to make sure you're doing is doing some link building. So this is about having a Facebook profile, an Apple Maps listing, a Yelp listing, a Bing listing. There's some services out there that you can utilize that will help you do this. Um, we create these for our clients and um, it, it expands your visibility online. And it's what every other business is doing, whether you're an independent or whether you're a franchise, you need to be doing these sort of things um, so that you can you can increase your visibility. We create branded videos for each one of our clients. So you can see this video, these videos here. They're about the services they provide, about the company, about um, projects that they've done. And ultimately what this does is they, it gets added to the service page and it helps with indexing and it helps with conversions. You know how people nowadays, they just don't read things and they jump to conclusions on things. So people will watch a video much more so than they will ever read anything. So if somebody's coming to your website to find out if they want to, hire you for mold remediation, and you have a video talking about how you provide the services and what, what to expect, they're going to watch that, right? And so you can use this for testimonials and, and sort of um, the more you take advantage of video nowadays, the more exposure you're going to get for your company, okay? Ultimately, we talked about before Google Maps. And so here's a grid of one of our clients in the Salt Lake City area. And what you want to do is make sure that you show up on Google Maps. And there's a number of ranking factors that go into play with Google Maps, okay? And really what that is about is a uniform name, address, phone, okay? And so you want to have reviews, you want to have photos, you want to have services and, and posts on your Google Maps. You also want to connect your social media profiles. Um, and so Google gives you a lot of options to to optimize your Google Maps profile from product listings to service listings, to links to your website, to your social media and those sort of things. Fill out every single thing they give you and back it up with getting reviews onto this profile and you will have success with it. You will absolutely have success with it. But not optimizing Google Maps alone is not enough because you need to have that website asset that, that mirrors exactly what's on your Google Maps. So if Google says, hey, water damage restoration is my primary category, you need to have a water damage restoration page on your website and then link to that. So there's that, that they, they, they work together, okay? So, um, so far what we've talked about is some introduction, common issues, our process and what works in 2024. And we're going to, um, we're gonna talk about some specific projects that you can take on in, in this year, okay? And so we're just getting towards, uh, we're almost headed towards the end. I know said, I said 30 minutes, but maybe I talked too much. So um, anyway, let's um, let's continue on. You know, ultimately SEO, SEO, you need to have some projects that you're gonna get out of this, right? And a goal without a plan is just a wish, right? So let's make sure we make this an actionable time that you've spent here. So when we talk about on-site optimiz optimization, what should you focus on? There's a million things you can focus on, but what should you focus on? These are the things that I would absolutely focus on. A strong website with good content that actually you know, loads very quickly on a mobile phone and, and whatnot, right? Um, if you can make sure that you have that in place, it's a great starting point. If you are just getting started out in the industry, don't go out and build a, a, a huge website. You don't need to do that. You need to start with a homepage and talk about the services that you provide and have a contact us page. So I'm not saying, hey, this is a strategy by creating a website, you're automatically going to get 50 phone calls. It's a long-term strategy to help you build your brand, increase your visibility in your area. Okay. So you want to have service pages. You want to have pages for all the cities in your area. Don't stop everything and go out and create 50 pages for all the cities around you or, or suburbs around you. That's not what I'm talking about. Go ahead and create some of the more populated areas or areas you want to do work and then add to it over time, right? You want to have helpful content on each of your pages. So um, if you go to your website now and you go to your water damage restoration page and you only have 50 words of content, 
Look at the competitors around you. Do a Google search, find out who's showing up on top, and I can guarantee you they're going to have more content on that page. And that's because Google um, is looking for you to show your expertise. So make sure you have helpful content on your page that talks about your processes, talks about common occurrences of how you um, how you can help homeowners or businesses, and, and um, talks about the jobs that you've completed, right? You want to make sure your keyword keywords are in line on each and every page. Go to the page, and on that page, make sure the home page of your website talks about your company and the overview of the services that you provide and the area that you primarily focus on. So if you're ABC Damage Restoration in Chicago, Illinois, um, you want to say ABC Damage Restoration providing um, services in Chicago, Illinois. That's the title of your homepage. Then when you go to your water damage page, you want to talk about the title of that page. And so treat every page just like that. And then create a unique description, what's called meta description for that page. And when you search on Google, you'll see the title of the page, the first line, and then right below that is the meta description. Make it easy for people to click on your, on your listing, okay? You want to make sure you have name, address, phone number in the footer of your website, and you're doing consistent blogging and, and updates there. And we talked earlier about speed optimization. So those are the on-page things. Off-page things, what should you focus on? Again, there's a million things you should focus on. But this is what I think is the most important right now in order to get you set up. So you want to claim your Google business profile, right? If you don't have a Google business profile, um, I would absolutely end this webinar and go create it. Go to google.com slash business and create your profile there. That's where you can manage it. You can update it. You can do all those things. Google.com slash business and then log in or create your profile there. All right. The other thing you want to make sure you're doing is setting up citations. What are citations? Citations are the, the places like Yellow Pages and Yelp and all of these other directories online that every large business is going to have. Whether you're a SERP pro or whether an independent, you need to make sure you have these citations so that Google knows about your company. And that second, uh, that third line down there is called data aggregators. They're service that if you search out their data aggregators, um, you can submit your profile to these information companies online and they will distribute your company out to a bunch of different directories and, and whatnot, okay? The fourth thing, you want to make sure you're building on reviews online, on Google Maps, on Facebook, on Yelp, okay? Those are the three top ones that I, I, I truly recommend, Google Maps being 90% of it because that's where 90, 95% of searchers go to. But if somebody doesn't have a Google Maps profile or a Google Maps email account, they can't submit a review, okay? So what we typically will do then is recommend sending them to Facebook or Yelp, okay? And the best part, best time to ask for that review is when they give you a compliment. So make sure you do that, um, not at the end of the job, but when you actually solve the most important issue for them um, during that job, right? And so there's, there's a couple ways that you can do this. You can have postcards with QR codes on them that you can hand to them. You can ask them, you can send them a text message, or you can create um, a card that actually had, that you can put up onto your phone and um, that card will automatically direct them to submit a review for you, right? So those are review cards that we send to our clients. The next thing you need to focus on is building authoritative backlinks to your website. What does that mean? So let's say you're a part of a local BNI chapter or you're part of the Chamber of Commerce, or you've sponsored an event in your local area, you want to, if you're sponsoring something, typically these companies will say this company sponsored us on their website. So get a link to your website for those companies. If you do a scholarship for a school, um, all those sort of things, make sure they're linking back to your website. If you do a press release in your local area, which I highly recommend, is um, if you write a press release and uh, send it to your newspaper talking about uh, a job that you did or whether you helped a school with mitigation or whatever it is, um, most times they're going to pick that story up because they don't have to write it, right? It has to obviously be a good grammar and all of those sort of things, but um, they will link back to your website then. These are authoritative links that will help you gain visibility in Google's eyes and help you get those trust signals and trustworthiness that, that are going to help you succeed. Uh, so that's about press releases and YouTube and making sure you're doing Google posts. So these are the things that I would focus on right now for your company. So um, at this point in the webinar, what I would highly recommend you doing 
is, is take out a piece of paper and hopefully you've been taking some notes along the way, but if you haven't, take out a piece of paper and write the three initiatives that you feel like you're going to focus on, whether it's going to be your on-page, making sure that the title of that page is, is appropriate, whether it's Google Maps, making sure you have all of that data filled out in there, or maybe it's uh, about making sure you're signed up for Yelp and all those directories. So put down the three things that you want to focus on the most, and then right below that, who are you going to tap on your team or um, uh, work with to help you do that, right? And so this is the most important thing I want you to get out of this is that pick one or two or three things, not 10 things, not 20 things, pick three things that you're going to focus on and then write who you're going to tap to help you accomplish that, whether it's a local company or whether it's um, a team member that's on your team. So here's here's those items again. Here's the on-page things that we talked about. Do you have services service pages for all your services? Do you have location pages? Those sorts of things. Do you have a Google Maps profile set up? Are you doing citations? Are you getting reviews and all those things? Okay. So make sure you put that list together, those three things. And you can have more if you want, but um, I, I would just recommend to start with three and, and build upon there. And again, I'm going to give you those resources uh, at the end of this, give you a link to that so that you can have a comprehensive approach. You can have our entire book um, that talks about it. I've got that book right here. So um, it basically goes through our action plan, whether it's SEO, whether it's PPC, it, you'll get a copy of this book here. Okay. So again, we've worked with a lot of companies online, independents and, and national franchises. And ultimately, here's a, here's a case study of a client that has a comprehensive approach that using SEO and, and Google ads and Facebook ads even in, in social media. And you can kind of see that they started, they've been with us well over three years now, and they have had a ton of success um, online and they get a ton of calls from SEO. They get a ton of calls from Google ads and it, it's about having a, the comprehensive approach, right? Uh, in order to accomplish that. Here's another company that has worked with us for over five years. They do local SEO, they do Google ads and so on and so forth. And you can see on average, they're getting around 83 calls per month, right? Which is amazing. They're a big, big company, but um, you can kind of see this is a comprehensive approach that you have to make sure you just don't want and done it, right? Um, and so these are some examples of companies that we've worked with. This company here, um, Jim from Pride in St. Louis has been with me probably the longest. And um, he told me uh, last year, they got a $2.3 million job, um, which doesn't happen every day, right? Um, is a 60 unit apartment complex that flooded and um, caused tons of damage. Obviously, uh, they had a big water main that broke. Um, but but really, the, what what I want to get across from this is it it we're here to help you if you want some recommendations um, for your company specifically. If you want to um, go to restorationmarketing.com/calendar. Um, that's the best place to schedule a call with me and I'll diagnose specifically what's going on for your SEO profile, or if you have some paid ads questions or whatnot, um, that's the best way to, to communicate with us. You could obviously call us as well, but, um, you know, if you go to restorationmarketing.com, feel free to schedule a recommendations call and I'll dive in and answer any of the questions you want. If we get the opportunity to work together, that's great. If not, and I can help you along the way, then, then even better for me. Okay. Um, this is our true process here that we follow. We talk about visibility, branding, and conversions, and all those elements work together to get you the results like we um, we showed you before for those companies. And it, it it's about following this approach and making sure you have a blueprint blueprint to follow um, in order to do that, right? And it's a comprehensive approach that we typically will, will deploy for all of our clients, whether it's a website or Google Maps or Google Ads or SEO, YouTube, social media, reputation, and having a CRM that helps you track all of those elements, right? And if you put all of that together, you're going to elevate your brand. You're going to dominate your competition, all right? And so like I said before, I am true to my word here. I want to help 50 damage restoration companies be successful this year. And I want to give you a copy of our book. If you go to restorationmarketing.com slash 2024, you're going to see not only our comprehensive webinar about 2024, but you can get a copy of the book. You can get a copy of these checklists that I talked about before. 
and um, you can download those and use those as needed. Um, and it gives you the opportunity also to book a call with me if you want to um, talk about your unique scenario as well. Um, thanks, Mike, for wishing me a happy anniversary there. Yeah, um, I really appreciate that. So um, thank you very much. And so, again, if you want to book a call with me, you can go to restorationmarketing.com slash calendar. If anybody has any burning questions about SEO, um, feel free to book a call with me or you can comment here in Zoom if you want to. Um, and, and I'd be happy to answer any of those questions that you might have. Um, but that is it for today's webinar. I really appreciate you. Um, I really appreciate you joining and taking time out of your day. And don't forget to put those action items in there that you're going to work on. So have an amazing day and um, we'll talk to you soon.